Welcome to Costly Conversations. I'm super excited because we have a very special guest, my guy, Heavy, um, the owner of Heavy Metal Lifestyle Apparel, and of course, the creator and co-host of the Pop Culture 223 podcast. Now, before we kind of get into the show, I do want to remind you guys that the best way to support the show is to join us on Patreon. We actually have an exclusive uh, members-only page on Discord, which, you know, we can interact and have different conversations and kind of go deeper into different subjects that maybe we just don't have time to on the show. And there's other perks that we are trying to make sure that we roll out for this next year, including a uh, quick announcement. If you didn't know, now you know. I'm going to GunCon, and that's exciting. And what I've decided to do, if this makes, if anyone cares, I'm going to be basically every day that I'm there, I'm going to be photo dumping the majority of the shots that we get and the information or videos. We're going to try to do that early for the members. And of course, we're going to trickle them out for the Instagram people and, you know, YouTube side and all that. And that's, that's cool. Um, but in addition to GunCon, we are 99% sure, more like 100% sure that we are going to naga uh the naga convention and i would love to share that inf uh, share that content with you guys uh members first and of course we'll trickle it out to the armed atlas youtube channel and of course the cost of conversations podcast channel um and another quick note we are broadcasting to both the cost of conversations podcast channel and the armed atlas youtube channel if you are listening on the armed atlas youtube channel make sure you're subscribed to the costly conversations podcast channel because um we actually don't normally stream to both except for guests who are like you know two-way focused uh and then that way those conversations make sense we do have a few other conversations that aren't just purely two-way um another quick note before we start last note i swear <laughs> please like the stream while we are live and of course like the replays it helps it out it helps it to get to more people if you have facebook because you know you're a grandpa like myself post it onto your facebook if you got an instagram let people know what you're doing that'll be dope um other than that let's go ahead and uh let's get started i'm excited let's go ahead and talk to heavy My man, Heavy, what's good, brother? What's good? What's good, man? How everybody doing on, on all the channels and, and um, uh, setups, YouTube, Spotify, everybody. How everybody doing today? Man, I'm, uh, I'm glad that you're here. And of course, I'm glad that the audience is here, uh, has an opportunity to hear from you, hear a little bit about what you're doing with the Pop Culture 223 podcast and, and, and your other ventures such as Eric, Erica's Big Day. I know if... They've been listening for a while. The EDC guy, Ron, the EDC guy, he came on and talked and talked about the book, Erica's Big Day. And you had uh, a role to play in getting that book out and, and in the hands of parents. And that's dope. Uh, I think that should not be forgotten. Um, but let's let's talk about you, Heavy. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself so people can kind of get an idea of who the heck you are. <laughs> if everybody don't know, I'm um, Heavy Metal Lifestyle. That's my tag name. Uh, like Heavy Metal Lifestyle 223. I started uh, a two-way clothing brand. I don't even know. It's been a long, about six or seven years ago. Still got the company up. Um, just pushing towards, uh, you know, getting a brand out there. It's a, it's a, it's a fight, you know, with this, with everyday life, you know, doing this. Uh, the clothing brand on the side or whatever. But I started the company because I felt like we wasn't real represented in the 2A space. So I want to uh, create a t-shirt brand and a brand that represented me and everything I was doing. Um, you know, just in the shooting world that represented me where I come from. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, uh, born and raised Detroit, uh, Motor City. However, y'all, you know, know about it. Uh, so that, that's about it, man. And like I said, uh, I created the brand to represent us because I felt like in the clothing brand, in the two A industry, we we wasn't real represented with the clothes we was wearing or the t shirts because I wasn't from like the military or the police background. Um, I was more of a civilian in, in the game, and I felt like you know I wanted to wear t shirts that represented me and my lifestyle and how I seen it. 
So that's that's a little bit about the heavy metal lifestyle brand. I, I just mixed a little gun gunpowder with a little street with a little street vibe. So there it is in a nutshell. Um, yeah, no, I, I think you're you're definitely right. I mean, the number one Second Amendment uh, brand that I, I think about when I, you know, think like okay, like Second Amendment apparel brands, right? I'm like, okay, I mean, there's there's the big like textile manufacturers or not the textile manufacturers, but like the Vertexes and such, and those those are interesting. And you know, the the Five Elevens and the, okay, that's cool. You know, it's like okay, some of the outdoor brands. And if you're not like an outdoor brands kind of guy. Is that, but the, like, the number one that you see like all over Facebook and junk is like grunt style. You go to Walmart and you're like, okay, yeah, uh, I, see, I, I you know, see you in my life. You know you made it. You know you made it when you're in Walmart. Right. When you're in Wally World, you know you made it. But right. I, I guess you got, and then you got Nine Line too. I think mm-hmm. that's the name of the Nine company. Line. Nine, Nine Line. Line. But you, you see people wearing those shirts everywhere you go like oh, yeah. those shirts represent them and they might not even they may have a family some of those companies are more veteran own uh, you know backgrounds and you see a lot of family members or whoever just wearing the shirts just out you know grunt style t-shirts um you know 2a um you know positive pushing the message and that's why I, that's kind of how i wanted my brand to be like you could wear it anywhere it didn't, you know, you didn't have to be coming to the range to wear, but just be out and about and people ask you lifestyle is not what you wear, it's how you live kind of slogan. So um, that's that's the goal to be like that. Say, say that slogan again. It's not what you wear, it's how you live. It's not what you wear, it's how you live. That's, right. that's, that's what's up, so, man. Yeah, that, that's legit. No, I, I love that. So with... Um, with your brand, how have you been able to 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 reach people with it? Do you feel like it's it's done okay in the sense that people who see it they resonate with it, or do you feel like really we could do a better job of pushing it and making sure that people who who would identify with it do identify? You know, like where where do you think so, we are with this so far? So I'm gonna say the support from the community always need to be there you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. to to get a brand going and you always need more support from the community to make it to make it where it's a household name and people want to know where it came from or who it is and you you know you have a conversations in bigger circles so you can get like your brand into wally world right um yeah. so they see everybody's wearing it everybody's represented it. but that's just that's just that part but for me you know i need to I, I created a brand, like, you know what I'm saying? I created a brand, and I thought I was going to just hashtag black on, and there's going to be a million people to, you know? It's, the whole community world was going to jump on and buy, and I was going to be a millionaire overnight, and whatever, whatever, whatever. So that was like, okay, it didn't happen like that. So I myself need to, to you know, get get out here more, especially, you know, on the, the social media kick and be at events and just wear it and see people see me with it, see friends with it. Um, and then they ask and they, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I know heavy metal lifestyle. I've been, I've been missing out on some events, you know, places I should have been and didn't show up. And some of this is my fault, uh, just with life, kids and, you know, whatever else. Like my son played travel baseball. So in the summertime, I could be in three different States in, in all in, in, in one week. Um, so wow. that's my first part. That's my first priority when it comes to this. So, but Day and again, that's a sacrifice that I may make because I'm a father, right? Happy Father's Day to everybody. Absolutely. All and the, I, I, the, I made the mistake of not opening the show saying Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, all the dudes out there in their kids' life or really trying to be in their children's life, even if they are not currently able to due to, you know, hard circumstance. Um, the guys who are actively making an effort to, to, to be the man that their children need them to be. Happy Father's Day to you. You just now you know you, you messed. You, you know you honor. messed up, right? Right. Because if it was Mother's Day, you'd have, you'd have opened with hey, oh, Happy yeah. Mother's Day to everybody. But oh yeah. You Father's know what? Day, I actually didn't had, do a show on Mother's thought. Day. I actually didn't oh. do a show on Mother's Day because you know like, that would be sacrilegious. <laughs> like I would not have a place <laughs> to do the <this> show. <laughs> right. And 
and I want to mention one thing: you don't have to be a father to be a father figure, right? That's or right. A big brother, a big brother figure. You don't have to have a right. son or whatever, whatever. A kids, right. you can have nephews and nieces or whatever, and, and you're that um, father figure or positive role model in that person's life. So it don't That's have right. to be just a father. Yeah, I think I think the world needs more strong masculine figures, and I'm not trying to say you got to have everything figured out and you have to be like the best possible person ever. But I think you should be actively trying to be like, I think that's, that should be an effort. Um, and I think you should really, uh, be pushing to make sure that the people that you are serving, like the children, the young people can live an even better life than you did. I, I think that's what fathers do. Well, you, well, you said that's a, that's a whole nother conversation mm -hmm. when you said more masculine men, you know, stepping up to the point, uh, you know, some of that could be, be getting pushed out the way but that's another conversation right that, that so. is another conversation <laughs> honest, like when i say masculine figures and i i don't think i said masculine i'm pretty sure i said masculine figures and forgive me if i i mean should you forgive me i don't i don't i don't know if i care <laughs> um the the point being is that when you have guys who can treat young boys how to be men because that's my belief is that you have to be uh, one, a masculine guy and also a guy to teach, to teach children, young boys, how to be men, to teach young girls how to be uh, cared for and loved as a young lady. And if you don't do that, you're kind of setting people up for failure. The expectations cannot be met if they're never set. And I'm going to get off my soapbox before somebody says, well, what's wrong with him? You know, well, you know right. forget right. it. Yeah. If, you, if you don't like it, like, <laughs> they're about to delete the whole channel. Off. I'm about to get deleted. reported. Delete. De right. Take me off the internet. Anyways, I want to get back to you and what you're doing. And I think I, I want to dive into the Pop Culture Two Two Three podcast. When I when I hop on the, the 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 podcast and I tune in, I go on the YouTube or the Spotify, wherever to tune in. I get and forgive me if this is like cliche or if this is not flattering at all. I'm getting kind of a, a Breakfast Club kind of vibe, just like a little bit more tame. You know what I mean? Is that what you were going for, or or did you have a completely different vision? No, you, well, you know, um, low key, I seen what you was doing, and I was like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump out here, you know. So you kind of gave me some. Uh, I was like, man, I need to get out here and do something else. I'm completely. You know tired. what I'm saying? <laughs> I was yeah. saying, but you know, talking to my homeboy, uh, the EDC guy, man, we mm -hmm. talk, we talk about a lot of two A things. We talk about a lot of situations, just content, and this, this, and this. And my main goal was for the pop culture two, two and I had pop culture two two three the logo made up like ten years ago, and I just kept it and I didn't know what to do with it. But the main goal with pop culture two two three was the Erica's Big Day, us talking about um, our our mission with the Erica's Big Day project, and we felt like nope, nobody loves you like you love yourself, and nobody's gonna represent you like you represent because we weren't really getting the push that we needed or get it getting out there like we wanted it to get out there in different you know different setups or you know social media or whatever community so we i felt like look um i can do a youtube channel on my podcast and then push push the erica's big day idea you know represent it talk about it every chance i get and then um that was the main goal but then also was to educate and train people, especially in my community and, you know, in like, I would say Detroit area, like we missed in, in our community, we were misinformed about a lot of stuff. We miseducated or uneducated about a lot of stuff if, when it comes to the firearm, right? Like you get a CPL, you get a CPL license, you go to the eight hour class, you know, some people say I can do it in an hour, whatever, but you go to an eight hour class, but that's just the, that's just the surface of what it is to have to be a responsible um, gun owner, right? So the education part comes in later. Like it needs to go right, right hand in hand, right? You get your CPL license and then you start learning and educating yourself about what you can do, what you can't do, how to shoot the platform, how to use the gun, how to use the gun properly. But we don't get a lot of that in our communities. Um, so I just felt like, look, I've probably got hours and hours about training and, and, and the different classes and going to this instructor going here going there going to some bad places going to some going into some outfits that were just like you know bad instructing um but still learn something out of it and i felt like well let me be the voice of my community in my area if somebody wants to learn something or get some education let me put it out there 
So it kind of started like I wanted to talk about guns and gear and this, this, and this. But then it kind of transformed itself into more community talk, talking about, you know, helping the community in the community, what we can do to improve, to improve the community. And, um, you know, people coming on, everybody's on there is had has a gun or a firearm and did some type of training, but maybe not as high level that have, you know, training that I have been in. But still, they was in the community trying to help the community was all about, you know, arming them, arming the community, making everybody sure everybody's safe. So it kind of evolved into community education, you know, culture, community and training. Um, so that's kind of how it, that's what it kind of evolved into. Like if you want to jump on there and get um, go gun nut, gun geek, we can go in there and get gun geek, you know, get geeky with the guns. But it, we've been, you know, just telling stories, man. And, you know. Like we had, me and you had this conversation. Sometimes I may feel that the story is relevant, but I hope, you know, I always hope that the people that listen to the show and see it on Spotify or, you know, listen to it on platform think that the stories that I bring um, on the show are relevant to them. Now, you know, like I think I'm like the Tim show in, now maybe all 10 might not be relevant, but maybe one or two may be relevant to you, right? Um, right. And, you know, I can't, and you can't, the show is not for everybody, right? Because, you know, in our community, like on the IG and people we know in the community, they, you know, they weigh high up there as far as gun firearms. But, you know, we still got to be the bridge between that world and the community to educate the community and educate the homies on what they can and can't do. Because, you know, I go to the gun store a lot. I'm always up there. And um, we still got people to come in to the gun store, to the gun store and think it's illegal to buy body armor right in mm. Detroit she's like he, one guy's like look I thought it was illegal to buy it but why did he think that because in his community somebody probably told him or or he didn't really know right so right. um so that right there lets you know like we still not ed- we're the, it's an education it's it's a learning gap in between yeah. the us and then the neighborhood right um train the hood you know Maz used to, Maz Terrell used to Maz had that hashtag train the hood and I, I think that's like the the definitely thing of pop culture two two three. Like, if I can be the bridge between my world and the hood to educate the people, then you know I'm I'm doing something good. Yeah, you absolutely are doing something good, and and like you said, there are people who will, depending on where I post and uh, depending on who I'm talking to, there are people who really have no idea like what they're talking about, and. It's sad because, you know, they're going to be passing on bad information to other people. Like if they're if they're telling me bad information, you know, they're telling somebody else bad information. And just me with the with my understanding of, you know, certain laws, regulations, um, things like that, such as. And maybe this is not a great example, but this is uh, something that happened. And I I think I already told this story before, but who knows? You know, uh, you may have not heard this one. There was a recent. Uh, tragic shooting in Allen, Texas. And then somebody recently said, you know, like, we got to do something about it. Like, what do you think we should do about it? You think they should uh, repeal or or ban the uh, constitutional carry? Well, I was like, well, no, that really has nothing to do with that because that guy came in with a, with a rifle and shot up a bunch of people openly carrying the rifle in a mall like it is there was no concealing at all of a handgun or any (laughs) any 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 such things like those two things don't aren't related at all and for you to say that i mean i'm not trying to call this person dumb or even that they even thought it fully through in order to say anything but you see a lot of politics you see a lot of politicians saying things that are actually dumb and not well thought through at all and then you hear people who are just trying to reach out for some sort of information they're they're hungry for knowledge on the subject they're curious and they're they're listening to politicians literally lie to them they're listening to local politicians lie they're listening to some old head on the block telling them information that's either outdated or just plain up just untrue like oh yeah you know that's it's illegal or no you can't have that body armor you can't do this you can't do that it was like well, no, no 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 that's actually not true that may be true in California or New York or something like that. But in, in the city as it stands right now, we can, we can do all that. And you should exercise your rights to protect your, 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 your bodily autonomy, your personhood uh, with whatever uh, force slash defensive tools 
necessary, such as body armor, such as 10, 11, 12 round magazines, depending on, you know, your, you know, what is quote unquote lawful in your area, even though it should all be lawful in my opinion. And I don't think that's a profound statement. Anyway. Well, you know, man, um, I, th this is just me, right? So if you take away all the guns, bad people are going to find stuff to do bad stuff with. I don't care if it's a handgun, a rifle, a bat. Remember, if you, well, we, we probably around the age, but, you know, you used to watch the old warrior movies that come on, the little gang, the bangs, and they be having bats with, with needles in them and chains, and they used to fight. That was just something like, man, it's stupid. And then everybody, like, they ready to fight, they ready to link up, and then the guy pull out a thirty-eight revolver out of his, out his vest, and everybody run, like, oh, my God, you got a gun. You know, that was, like, the biggest thing then. But remember, those guys still had stuff they can do destruction with. The oh, gun yeah. was just like one, one person had to one one person had to hit her. That was it. Everybody just had bats and stuff. But so if you take the gun out of or the firearm out of it, bad people is gonna find stuff to do bad stuff with. So oh, yeah. it don't matter. I mean like prime, I don't, prime I don't example, see... The Walking Dead. How many people have just weapons of mass destruction that they're just <laughs> right. killing people with? <laughs> they're, 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 they're not guns. Right. 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 I, I don't want to be the, you know, I, I'd rather not see a, a, a situation where a guy stab, you know, go on a stabbing spree. <laughs> Hopefully, you know, just with a bat or some or just some creator to do damage. I don't want to see what that would look like. So, no, I mean, you know, well, unfortunately, we've seen it. Uh, was it Norway or somewhere? They had a guy going into the, the grocery store with a bow and arrow, just murking people with a bow and arrow. You don't so want to get shot with a bow and arrow. <laughs> now, what point? Is, at what point did somebody say, you know what? We're gonna bum rush him because he can't get this thing off quick enough. The first after the first one he shoots, somebody should have jumped his jump, jump. Right, and you know, part of that is like the psychological condition of of uh, bystander effect, where you see something bad happen and you're not able to, I guess, kind of really process that information. And maybe that's not the right effect, but um, there there are a lot of like deer in headlights things that happen to people and it's just like oh man like what, what should i do like well, I don't know. people don't want to engage into a situation and then they get hurt because they it's just a mind shift like i was talking to somebody about this on the podcast the uh on my podcast it's a mind shift like you you got to be willing to put yourself in a situation to protect you yourself or whoever's around you mm -hmm. and and you know if if it's that time is that if the lord chooses you that time Hopefully that you would do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you, your family come first. You want to make sure everybody's safe. But you know, if you yeah. can do something, do it. But you know, everybody's not cut like that. No, they're not. But that's part of the issue that I'm seeing nowadays is people who aren't really willing to step up and not get in the way of bullets, but deal with the bullets. Like stop the you can't stop the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, like you it's know, hard. It's hard to record. it's hard to teach that, you know. You can't record everything with your phone. I mean, that's good. Somebody need to be recording, but you know, people whip their phone and start recording crap before they do something else. That's the, that's but. the first instinct, and for real, like that's one thing that I want to talk to you about. When you, I know you said like a big part of the brand is really speaking directly to like the black community, the culture, things like that, and it's like okay. At what point are we going to put the phone away and like get involved, or is it really so important to to have the opportunity to document this thing or go viral via you know what, whatever World Star moment World Star app is available at the I mean like what what I don't even maybe you're not the right person to ask like what are they thinking like clearly you you're not everybody out there recording but like what 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 are you seeing? Well, I, I know I got it's well, it's definitely one group in the city of Detroit, my homeboy Zeke. Um, mm -hmm. he's the head of a New Era Detroit. And if it comes to a situation where some women or some babies is, is involved in a situation, they got they got about two or three hundred brothers on the on the street. They knocking they knocking on doors, they they up and down the block, they trying to find a situation. And you know, he always looking for good men to come out there and help. Um there you, go. you know, sooner or later it, it just it's going to just take one person to you know step in to do something you know a responsible armed citizen to you know take the initiative but you know it's always you got the situation then you got the after effect so mm -hmm. you know some people like man i ain't do that because it's going to be a big situation 
after the you know after that situation so who knows yeah, yeah things get really complicated really quick um, really quick yeah yeah so with uh with your podcast like what kind of what kind of i'm all about storytelling these days like with the on the on the youtube side for um like the armed atlas youtube channel with the firearms i'm trying to figure out better ways to story tell you know telling the story behind why i personally find that this gun fascinating or why i personally um uh, think that this tool can help you or or building some sort of narrative what kind of stories are you getting the opportunity to tell on your podcast like who 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 are you talking to what are, what are they talking about like beyond just what you already told me um so on the like i said some mo most of everybody that besides one person um my homeboy jeff wild the lead instructor and owner of dmi performance um everybody else the first question i ask them when they come on the show is like you know like you said like the breakfast club we kind of laugh and joke and that's what the podcast is. is It's serious when we want to be, but we kind of laugh and joke to keep the good, positive energy in there, um, keep it going. And I always ask them, what's the first firearm you bought? And I swear to you, I probably had more people say they bought uh, high points than – I had a lot of people say they bought high points and then, you know, and Glocks and high points. And, you know, I always ask them, like, why did you buy it? And it's always a, it's always a great story behind why they bought a high point. But then they say they understood what it was, and then they and they improved it because they, you know, they went. Cause at the time, the money they had, that was the feasible uh, purchase, right? Because of the cost, I got it. They right. wanted to protect themselves, and they was like, "Look, high point, what is is what it was. The price point was great." But since then, I have upgraded, right? So you know, I tell them, you know, so it's always, oh, "What what was your first gun?" And then I tell them, you know, uh, I had a you know Glock nineteen and. It was more or less my father had one, so I got that because my dad had one. So it was like a story behind that. So it's always, you know, it's kind of like story time. It's like when you're talking with the homies and we kicking in, we talk about this, that, and the third, and it's always like, okay, well, this is why I bought it. And they'd be like, oh, okay, well, I got a story too. Well, you know, somebody tried to you know, take my Cartier glasses, you know, my yays, as we call them in Detroit, the yays off my face, and I just felt like, you know, I needed something to protect myself. And at the time, it was a high point. So they understood that they had to get a, you know, at that point, get a firearm or get something to, to protect them. And then we go into like, you know, guns and what kind of purchases and what kind of guns they like. You know, we kind of make fun and joking, you know, jokingly about it to, to, to educate. So that's that's kind of how we go into story time. OK, well, I, I noticed that recently you you had a guest on who was talking about um well, you had a few guests on that I found to be super fascinating, such as um, I think you guys had a, a news guy on there at one point. Um, Mr. Um, Randy Wimberly. Yeah. yeah. Channel 2 News. Yeah. Channel, and, yeah, and, Channel and 2. A, a school administrator, uh, if I'm not yep. mistaken. And then you also had yeah. somebody on more recently. I didn't get a chance to really peep that one yet, but that's on my list. Um, a lady talking about uh, a family member who was kidnapped. Man, that's a... that. So, get, I, hype I guess, us up, man. Tell tell us a little bit about it, listen, but just listen, enough to that people want to go and check you out and figure out, you know, like listen to the whole thing. So about to say, I don't know, you know, what this. You got to go watch the show. Got to is is right now is streaming on all uh, podcast platforms. Right, the YouTube video of the studio will be up this weekend. Um, she what happened was her her sister was in D.C. And this was a this was another this is a, another flip of the coin. This was a she was in an extended stay hotel, and she opened her heart to a lady that came in and said that she was in a domestic violence situation, and she needed some help. You know, needed somewhere to stay because you know she had a little girl, a little kid with her. Um, and Ky Kylie, Kyla, Kylie, um, uh, Jay is the uh, the lady I had on. Uh, McDougal, but her sister is Kylie in DC. She, you know, told her, I'll help you, um, you know, get situated, whatever. And they were on the phone, you know, talking back and forth, her, her sister and her mother. And they heard the conversation she was having with the lady. And they were just like, Kylie, why are you uh, helping this lady? You don't know who she is. She in your space. Um, you know, don't, you know, be careful. And Kylie was telling them, like, I got this. I can't leave this lady and this baby out in the rain or out like this. I need to help them. Now, mind you, the lady Kylie was 
divorced. You know, she, you know, divorced, had kids. So she, her motherly instincts kind of kicked in and say, look, I need to help this lady um, get out of this situation because, you know, she could be, you know, need, need, you know, need some help. So she helped her. And what wind up happening somehow, some way in between, I want to give it all away. And between her helping the lady, she got abducted or kidnapped by some people that held her hostage um, and was, you know, asking for money from the family but it wasn't even a lot of money man it was like a thousand dollars they was asking for it was asked for like small kind of change so you already knew what kind of people that was right um mm -hmm. so what wound up happening she got abducted they held her like for four, three or four days um police kind of dropped the ball on a lot of situations they had a lot of information they was like on the phone with the police talk you know on the phone with police you know give the police um uh, Kylie's phone had it pinged, cash app, all kind of things. But if y'all listen to the show, um and you know, listen and, and listen to her tell her story, you will be like, Man, that's a that was a bad situation because what happened was at the end Well don't tell was, us the end. Don't oh, tell us right, don't okay. tell us the conclusion, well, bro. Like you're no, setting right, it up. Like let, let him let him go listen. <laughs> I hope that was a good explanation, but y'all definitely go look at it, definitely listen to it. Um, she got a. It's a story because I wanted to. I wanted her to come on there for another reason. Yeah. Because of her hustle, because she owns a, a printing company. I mean, uh, she do screen printing and embroidery and all that. And you know, she's more, you know big six figure company now. She started with five hundred dollars in a dream, and she grew this business. So That's I really want her on there to to tell that story. But that kind of evolved in between me getting her on the show. So I want yeah. her to tell the story. And, and true so people can listen to it here and then you know maybe help out or you know do something okay so all my uh murder mystery junkies you know crime yeah. junkies true crime go ahead tap in with the uh my guy heavy pop culture 223 podcast for the true story of um his guest justice for kylie justice for kylie and that's on justice the pop for culture kylie. 223 podcast justice for kylie yeah that, yep it's dope I got to go finish that when I get a chance. Probably right after yeah, we get done here. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. This is the question. Do you, do you listen to your podcast, this, the previous one, is this, just to critique yourself? Uh, I, until very recently, I would take, well, yes, I still do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but it's not necessarily to critique myself, but I always find myself critiquing myself in the process just like I'm listening through and I'm like, okay, well, I, I really took a long time to set up that one question. That question could have been like six words and I ended up adding additional three or four, five, six. It didn't really need to be there. Like, come on, we could, you know, clean, the, <laughs> clean that up, buddy. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very self-critical and that I think if you're not self-critical, either that can be the greatest liberator for a person and just say like, Hey, you know what? I can just pin my ear back, ears back, put stuff out there. If it doesn't hit, it doesn't hit, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Or on the other side, people who are self-critical, it can be beneficial to say like, hey, listen, like I'm not happy with what I put out. Let me clean it up. We'll do a little bit better. Honor the audience, honor their time. Because for real, like people who are live with us right now, you don't have to be here. <laughs> People who are listening on the podcast, like I was just listening and like, y'all don't have to be here right now. Y'all could be doing anything else. So like, shout out to you guys, you know, round of applause for you guys for, for finding the value in this. And I, I thank you for being here, whether you're a paid member or you just here tuning in. Cause this is something you've really enjoyed. Like I'm, I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you get a chance to, to learn about some of these guests, to hear a little bit more about what I think and, you know, does anyone care what I think? Sometimes I wonder that, but I, I guess <laughs> y'all are here. So thank you. Well, you know, I, I'm not that important, so I'm glad to be on here. You know, I, I guess I got to a little bit of celebrity to be on the uh, uh, constant conversation with the arm Atlas himself. Well, I, well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because there was, there's this idea that you have to be doing something extraordinary to ha sit down and have an extraordinary conversation or to share ideas that are novel or, or even great. And that's not necessarily the case. Although when, like in reality, like when you, when I think about, you know, KJ slash heavy or AKA heavy yourself and what you've been doing with the pop culture 
223 podcast and how important that is to reach a demographic that I, I just can't reach. Like I can try, but people who have a certain set of certain taste, they're going to, they're going to be able to tune in and be like, Oh, for real? Like this is, this is what's up. Like, I, I didn't realize this was here. Like, why didn't y'all tell me before? I don't have friends. Y'all didn't tell me about this. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's what I feel uh, your show is when it's kind of like the yin to my yang in a sense where it's like, okay, like I can kind of set people up and, and really dive deep into certain topics and get, you know, kind of pull out some of the emotional heartstrings and this and this and that. And you can do that too. But I think it's, it's from a slightly different angle that will really resonate with, with certain pockets of, of the, the general population in, like in general, but also um, with the people that I, I really desire to reach with this stuff. So like, bro, get it. Do it, man. Like, hey, you, you know, it. you know. I guess I try. The main thing on it is, um, you know, game recognize game. We recognize you, so please recognize us, right? I try to keep it real as possible. It's coming from experience. It's coming from just being out here in these. I want to say, AKA these streets. Um, right. You know, just you know, just a you know profile of just stuff I've done, been involved with, or you know, tried to help out or whatever. So everybody got a story to tell. Um, some people's stories may be um, better than most or some people, like I said, I bring a story to the pop culture podcast. I think it's interesting, but hopefully one or two people will grab some out of it when they listen to the story and then listen to other podcasts that I've done, you know what I'm saying? Just to keep it like, okay, oh man, I didn't know this is, a, oh, okay. He got some good stuff. So, you know, I always ask my homies that, that I appreciate their feedback to give me feedback, but you know, I get that phone call from my mama and she like, boy, you didn't pronounce that word right. You didn't. You better get better at this. I'm like, all right, mom. So I'm like, I try to put that in my notes. Be Man. more, get <laughs> speak a little bit clearer, because you know we we get to speaking a little bit of uh, neighborhood right. Detroit stuff, and they'd be like, oh, they they might have missed that 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 little lingo we had in there. So I try right. to be. You got to you got to try not to talk as, over people's heads. I mean, that's that's the truth. And you also, I, I've been thinking about this recently. You you have to honor the people who are listening to your podcast who might be new, like it might be their first time tapping in. And so I just want to take a quick second and say, Hey, thank you so much for tapping in. If this is your first time tapping in with the Casa conversations podcast, uh, thank you. Like we try to have these conversations with people in the second amendment space in the, in the space of, Hey, how can we build the, the community around us and protect what we build? Uh, that's not an easy task, but if we have real and honest conversations with each other, with, uh, you know, on social media and podcasts, I think we can get it done. So, I mean, that's that's a big goal of mine to build, protect what we build, to have real conversations, to try to get a little bit more, a uh, little bit more deeper. Is, is that good English? No, it's not. But a little bit deeper um, than just this surface level nonsense, this red versus blue, this white versus black, like we can do better. So let's tap into it. Let's dive into it. Um, if you found these shows to be interesting, obviously tap in with, uh, the Patreon, patreon.com slash armed Atlas and become a member five bucks a month. It goes a really long way to making sure that I can keep providing this content to you. This was not meant to be an ad. I just wanted to say thank you for tapping in if you're new. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to what Heavy is doing with the podcast. So here we go. Um, Heavy, I want to talk a little bit more about you. What was your, I guess, youth like? Like where, where did you come from? What kind of informs your perspectives <laughs> like what what was young heavy like talk about it um um young heavy man that's a good one young heavy what was young heavy like uh, it all depends on who you ask um you know i grew up in the, i grew up in uh detroit like i said uh, product of uh detroit michigan 313 um grew up in brightmore if anybody on here listening from the city of detroit they know brightmore um not a at the time was a the neighborhood was what it was it was um, a nice neighborhood, and it started kind of fading into a bad neighborhood. Um, so, you know, you have friends on both sides of the track. Um, area was, you know, heavily into gangs, and, you know, just it was just a neighborhood, right? My neighborhood might have been eight blocks, but it was like the world to me. Um, played Little League football, played AU basketball, 
um, did that all through high school to college, did a stint um, semi-pro over in um, Europe with the NFL. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? So when I when I came back, I jumped back into the neighborhood and started coaching Little League football just to give back to the kids in the community. Um, you know, knucklehead in school like everybody was for a while. Got my stuff together back probably in high school when – well, no, I say in middle school, you know, I played basketball and I didn't make, uh, I didn't, I wasn't eligible for one season in basketball and that hurt me. I think I had like a 2.0 or something and coach like you got to have a 2.5 or something like that. It might've been below that. I ain't gonna say what it was, but after that, I kind of like, you know, I, I love this game of basketball. So I kind of start like, Hey, get your grades. You gotta get into college. You gotta go to the next level. And you know, my circle around me, even though we was, you know, knuckleheads, they always in kind of sports. So my circle was always, you know, we was always at games, playing games, out of town, playing games, you know, playing AU, this and that. And we would just all come back together in the neighborhood and play, you know, play ball together. And, you know, one person was going to college here. So that means I had to grind hard to go to college there. So it was always a push because my circle was always competitive. And the people around me were good people. Um, you know, you, you get something to fall off through through the cracks down the way, but you just got to, you know, stay focused and st- keep your head down and just keep pushing and don't get caught up with the, the, the noise on the outside. And it's real hard. It's real easy to get caught up with the noise that's going around in neighborhoods. Um, but I had a, a lot of good people around me, good mentors, fathers, uncles, cousins that kind of kept me, you know, straight and narrow. So that's about it. Like, you know, everybody's story, man, you know, everybody, you know, did you talk to probably got a story like that. But that's about, about it in a nutshell. Yeah, man. Like, I appreciate you you sharing that. I think sometimes people see us on the internet and they're like, okay, cool. So this guy, he's, you know, he's interesting. He's doing this. But like, but like, who is he? And maybe, maybe they don't even go that far. But I think, I think it would be beneficial if they did go that far. Like if they kind of look past uh oh man he's got a he's got a nice camera set up oh he's got a professional looking podcast oh man he's got he's got a clothing line okay man he's selling he's probably rich no No. (laughs) i'm not rich heavy oh you got a staccato you got a staccato you must be rich no no Um, it just it happened to fall that way right 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 (laughs) and it's like man people people really do kind of see what's on the internet, see like I, I scraped up my, my coins to buy a really good camera. I scraped up my coins to, to, you know, get some studio time or what, you know, whatever it is that you or I have done to kind of put on a show. And that's all they see is the show. And people are like, man, yeah, you're the standard in this. Or you, it's like, really? Like I'm still, I'm still out here like insecure as heck about like so many things. Like, like wow. people, people don't even know. People don't even know. Or maybe they well, do. Like I told you before, like somebody said, man, you got a, you got a studio, you got an actual this, that, and the third. And I was like, really? Y'all think it's like that? I was like, man, you don't know what we was in here doing to get it to look like this or whatever. But that goes right. kudos to, to my co-host, the bear and, and deuce, deuce, deuce crew productions that make the studio look like a, it's like a, it's a real studio. So right. I'm, I'm like you, you know, I'm still, you know, self-conscious about stuff. I can't believe that I'm out here talking. And, you know, because, you know, in our community, you don't, you only talk to family members about family member stuff, right? Right. You know, on Sundays, you kick it. We kick it with each other. We kick it with family. But now I'm out here actually talking about life situations to to the world. You know, whoever want to listen to it, they're going to hear Right. It. And you might catch me tell a story that I only told, you know, sisters, brothers, cousins, you know what I'm saying, that they only know. But it just hit me, on, you know, it hit me like I need to tell this because – somebody might get something out of it, right? You know what I'm saying? Because, right. like, well, you know, one thing I, I didn't mention, like, at a young age, um, I lost two of my best friends to gun right. violence. Um, um, I think I was, one, I was, like, 10, 11. I was with him. I was with him all, and I was with him all night. Um, neighborhood party, you know what I'm saying? Neighborhood party. We was, Everybody was in the neighborhood. And something like, hey, man, you better go home because mama's going to get you. So it was late. It was, it was, I ain't going to say what time it was. It was late. So I left home. I went home. It was like in the neighborhood. I went home, wake up the next day, my phone blowing off the hook. Everybody want to know where I was at. Da, 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 da. I come to find out 
my best friend I was with maybe four hours ago, five hours ago, got killed. And I was just with him, right? So, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, a couple years later, I lost another good friend of mine to some other, you know, neighborhood stuff. Uh, but at a kid that's like 11 or 12, 13 years old, to lose two friends to gun violence, it kind of, you know, straighten you up or get you together. Like, hey, I need to, you know what I'm saying? My life, I need to be doing something different or hanging around certain other people or doing whatever. But like I said, um, you caught me in it and I just told the story because that may be something I tell on the story when I'm on the podcast about me losing, you know, me losing two friends at an early age that kind of, you know, still to this day, it kind of, you know, shaped my steps. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's that is that's the stuff that that informs who you are, like I mean, that 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 forms the the end product of of who is heavy you know like what is this what is this podcast really is it a, is it a therapy session for you is it a chance to kind of share with the world some of this knowledge that you have i mean it's 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 many things it's not just one thing right and i mean i <laughs> losing people of your childhood or in your childhood is so strange like and it kind of puts into I, I, t- I put it this way there's a few things that make you think about your mortality and about death, like having kids and buying life insurance. I've never thought about dying more than, ha- than when I had my girl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because I want to die. It's just like, yo, like, what if, what if I go, I don't, I don't know if I want to go there. Cause like, if I don't come back, like, well, you know, it, 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 so so what? I, I'm I was born in seventy nine, eighties, nineties, baby. You know, back in the neighborhood, it was like you won't live to be eighteen or twenty one. That was kind of like yeah. the like I tell my son that he he hear me, but it don't it, it don't process to him because mm-hmm. he in a whole different like he doesn't he not a he he don't he don't even understand that. Like I kept him in the neighborhood to play football all the way up, so he get it, he see it. But like when we was coming up, it was like, look, you may not live to be a certain age, and that was reality. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, you know, that was like what it was. And you had friends getting knocked off left and right. So you're like, oh, wow. But then now I'm a father with kids. I'm just like, I need to live. I need to live to be 150 because I got to make sure that, you know, <laughs> they they are OK. That's like the, you know, most scariest thing. Like what happens when we're gone? Because you take care of them. So you take care of them when they zero to when they 35 or whatever. They still your kids. So you just you just want to, you know, be create the best for them, especially in our community. Cause you know, we, we, we want to create wealth throughout and, you know, help our kids. We don't want the kids to be struggling when we pass. So we want to leave them something and life insurance is one thing that we can give them a, a definitely a head start on stuff or help out with stuff. Yeah, for sure. I, like, absolutely. Like my wife was sending me some, some videos the other day and she was like, man, this lady, cause we actually went parasailing for the first time. Um, was it last year or year before last and man, that was. We'll never do that. It's fun. It's fun as heck. Like it's it's an experience. Like you you're sitting there, and then all of a sudden you just you're going up, and you're you're looking over the ocean, and it's the deepest blues, and and like it's just you and whoever you go up with. There it was my wife. Me, we went up there, and it's just like man, like it's just us. It's so peaceful. <laughs> okay, now, you can have it. I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, anyways. Um, and then my wife sent me a video of these people going parasailing and um, apparently they died, right? They, yeah. the, 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 the wife died and the kids got hurt and it was like, oh my gosh. And it was a crazy situation where I guess they weren't even supposed to be out there and they didn't have the I right boat to one. be out there. And then the, the, the quote unquote captain cut the line to the parasail and they hit the bridge and she died and it's just like, oh my gosh, like that's. Yeah, I lead them to them other people. I, I, uh, mm-hmm. Is that white people stuff? Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's the that's y'all stuff. I, I, I'm so hey, nice, man. I, I don't get on no, I don't get on no roller coasters. I don't do none of that. I like my feet on the ground. Do not do extreme sports or dangerous activities without a dope life insurance policy. Because then, because here's and this guy who was selling life insurance years ago, he wanted to recruit me to do it. He was like, you know, the, the difference between he was African dude. And he was like, for me, the problem that, that we have is if I do something and I die, um, 
he was taking care of like a whole village back where he's from. Like he was making good money as a pharmacist, you know, legalized drug dealer. And you know, he was sending money back home and taking right. care of a whole village, which is great. You know, take care of your people. Right. Um, and he was saying, like, if I were to die, the whole village would be crying in tears. Like they would be weeping and mourning, just like crying out. And it's like, well, why? It's like, well, you know, there's the emotional attachment. Yeah. But like they the king is dead. You know, the meal ticket is gone. Other people, not that there is an, a, an emotional connection, but and this is it's going to sound callous and maybe untrue for many situations. Um, if you have a million dollar life insurance policy and you go snowboarding and you don't come back one day. One line that you are going to hear is, that, you know, at least she died doing what she loved doing. It's like, mm. it, it helps. It really helps. And I'm, I'm not trying to say like you, you won't be in pain. You will be in pain, but that's one thing you won't have to worry about. This is not an ad for life insurance. I swear to goodness it's not, <laughs> but you should probably get something. Cause if you die, like I understand if like you don't have kids, like maybe that's not something you really, really think about. But like, if you think you'll have any dependence, if you want to leave money to your nieces, if you want to pass generational wealth, get, get something. And you know, like even if it's like some term policy, it's like ten bucks a month for, you know, whatever. And if you die a little early, at least it'll send some money to your nieces and nephews so that they can start that business they always wanted to do. You know, like why would you not? It doesn't it's well, hurt you. That that's another like podcast in itself because in that our is. community we th- we we think it's it's not reachable to get that. We don't we don't know about the financial our, financial literacy is a is a big deal. You know, knowing what we know and you know. The, during tax season, how many how many tax offices pop up in the neighborhood? It's like they on the corner like liquor stores. Everybody mm-hmm. got a tax office during tax season mm-hmm. because that's the only time we think that we gonna get money, right? But they right. don't know. It's, it's not like, even you know, getting money. <laughs> like you just getting that. Not money even back. getting money, right? Whatever, right? So teaching them about long term life insurance or short term or whatever, just to educate them on that, knowing that it may it gonna get costs. Uh, you know, twenty dollars a month or whatever it may be. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But just to know it and have the options to, you know, to to buy into it and understand it, they can help. You know, help out the next generation. So yeah, that, and, I think that's like like we said that is that is another podcast in itself, and just just our thoughts, just our thoughts, and maybe maybe look into it. Maybe, maybe you know, build build what you have, protect what you build by creating some sort of parameters, creating a will. Uh, things like that, I, I think it's it's important, especially if you don't come from uh, a line or a legacy of wealth or uh, true empowerment. You should definitely you should definitely look into that kind of stuff. Um, that that living will is definitely uh, important. It's, it's huge. Um, so, like like the reason I brought up the idea of death, and I was I was just thinking, I was like, man, like. When I didn't lose any friends to gun violence. I did lose a friend to fighting. Um, it was the weirdest situation. Like these two two cats at school. One, you know, one of them I was close with. The other one I just kind of looked up to. He was like kind of like a a distant big brother. Like you know, we if I needed something, if I needed to get a ride home, he would you know drop me off. It was no big deal. Uh, he had a decal on the back of his car. It was an old Honda Civic, souped up, and it said, uh, "Trust no one." And that's such a nihilistic, you know, viewpoint, which is, you know, it's, it's rough. That's, that's what he believed. Um, but point, point being is he got in a fight and his heart gave out. Young dude, 17, his heart, he got in a fight. Didn't even like hit his head or anything crazy. He was just, you know, tussling. And all of a sudden he was passed out on the ground. Ambulance came up and it's like, yo, like what's going on? Next thing you know, I'm, we're at his funeral. And it's like, yo, like, I don't even know if I if I actually processed that. Like, that that's that's crazy. Yeah. Just just gone. Just gone. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, uh, yeah. You young, you don't. I mean, it's it's hard to process death and at a young age. To me, well, for me, it was. It was like, okay, right. um, drive through the neighborhood. Hey, man, you know, we over here chilling or whatever. But you missing one, so it's like, okay. Just keep it going. I don't know. Right. Man, it's um 
I, I keep hearing like stories of different people who, who have lost somebody, whether it's a sibling or and stuff like that. And then it's like, man, like what happens to the other siblings? Like what, where do they go? Like, what do they do? And then sometimes you see like, oh man, they really kind of like got into drugs and like kind of some heavy stuff. And it's like, would they have gone down that path if the other sibling was still with them, either to steer them in the right direction or to, you know, not introduce that trauma that maybe they maybe they're trying to uh, compensate for? Like, it makes you wonder. Well, well, another another one another thing, you know, in the community, in our neighborhoods, who who you scared to talk to people so mm -hmm. they could have been having a lot of pain and, and bad vibes and didn't know who to talk to to let it out like talking to us like a psychologist or whatever that's like taboo in our neighborhood you're not gonna do that you're gonna go talk to the pastor or you're gonna talk to the mom or grandma but you're mm -hmm. not gonna go talk to a person that's trained and educated to help you navigate your feelings you know so um yeah. but unfortunately why you say that it's funny one one of my friends the brothers and sisters did it, it kind of wound up like that kind of not that exact situation but it, they were it was kind of rough for a while um yeah. for them um uh, just just knowing them because they were real young they were young but they understood what happened so yeah yeah that's uh losing kids to to violence is is rough and i don't i don't have an answer for for any of that like i for a long time i i worked directly with kids especially like you know, quote unquote, inner city kids, which is such a such an interesting, you know, title. Um, but and really, the the biggest thing is earning the right to be heard. Because really, you just show up somewhere and it's like, hey, man, you know, I'm I'm some guy. I'm I'm a, I'm a good dude. I'm here to hang out with you guys, have a pizza party, you know, do activities, <laughs> help you with your homework. Or, OK, like, who are you? <laughs> Why do I well, care? You who I do. So, you know, I coached Lily football for 16 years in an inner city. Well, you know, you're, you're a football coach, but you're also a mentor. You're also a father, brother, whatever. You're mm -hmm. way more than a, a coach to the kids than just a football coach because yeah. you got a mentor. Like, I can't tell you how many times I didn't had to grab kids out of situations that was probably going, like, at that moment, right then and there, was going to go real bad for them. And we talking about kids that's 11, 12 years old. Right. Uh, from the neighborhood out of situations and then taking the practice. Coach, I need a ride. Got to go take him out of situation, take him to practice. Or coach, I'm in this. Take him out of situation, bring him to practice. And that's why we so passionate about Erica's big day. Why, Eric, you know, uh, the EDC guy, um, Ron, and I are so passionate about it. I just want to help kids. And I just well, felt let's, like. Let's set, let's set up Erica's big day. Like, what is Erica's big day? Is that a, is that a movie? Is that a novel what is that so i so that was one of those things that so i talked to i was talking to ron back in the day he had just get done with his uh handgun book um he wrote a book and i brought an idea to him like look won't you write a well, let's write a kid's book about gun safety about kids navigating around unsecured firearms and at first he didn't really want to do it because he was just getting done with his uh handgun book i think it's still out on this page his mm -hmm. his book and um Two, I want to say a month later, some later, he's like, man, I got a surprise for you. So then he's like, man, I did the book. I wrote it. He showed me everything he was doing. So I was in a maze. So the Erica Big Day book, it just, it kind of helps kids navigate around unsecured firearms. And all the story, the stories and the scenarios in the books are stuff that I came across and most kids will come across in neighborhoods that we come from with firearms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, unsecurely firearms, you know, at the park in the alley, at home, because, you know, if you had an uncle or cousin, somebody probably had it. well, in my world, somebody had an unsecured firearm. Um, you know, I was always the kid that run around and played tag in granddad's house or whatever. It was like, oh, this is a shotgun over here. Didn't know what it was, but like, oh, this is a gun. You know, waited for the parents to leave the house and go, you know, curiously looking around in my dad's drawers and this and this, because I know he had a firearm, because granddad had firearms, so. I was always the curious, the curious kid, especially being a boy. So I just felt like, you know, it was going to be a lot of parents with CPL licenses and having firearms. And I knew from previous training outside of CPL that um, it was going to be uh, a, a void in there that needs to be filled because they're going to go to these classes. They're just going to get the firearm. They're going to put it in the box and they're going to do something with it. 
And so mm-hmm. half of the people that leave a CPL class may not be even comfortable with shooting it at that time. They probably need some beyond training. They need to keep going at it and learning and educating itself. So I'm just like, hey, man, this book should be like that idea for the book should be right there. So parents can be so parents can have something to talk to their kids about and help them discuss the firearm. Right. In a, yeah. in a kid, you know, kind of friendly, nice, not so don't do this, don't do that kind of way. So it's kind of like, you know, it's a nice read. Now, if you you can be pro-gun or, you know, pro-gun or anti-gun, whatever, because of the situation when you read it, you can say, well, this is what happened when you do this. Or, you know what I'm saying? You can go, it's, it's, it's education. So it's, it's not, it's, it, it can go either way. And that's how he kind of constructed the book. So you can have a lesson about this is the things you shouldn't do or this is the things Erica did to prevent this situation. So if anybody read the book from the front and the back, at the end of the story, somebody's missing. Somebody's missing in the story. And you can kind of like bring and say, okay, well, why is he missing? And the story is because maybe he got a hold of an unsecured firearm, right? So, um, and that's another thing. We created the book and think we're going to be millionaires overnight, but that didn't happen. <laughs> to <its Yeah>. <laughs> that's, um, there, there's so many things that we, we need to talk about with that. First of all, um, I'm trying to be wise and make sure that we, we understand, uh, lingo and jargon terms like CPL. Uh, mm-hmm. what is, what is a CPL? Concealed pistol. Oh, you had a concealed pistol license. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So for everybody, for everybody who wants to know, because d- depending on where you live, they, they label it differently. Concealed carry oh, license, CC. concealed pistol yeah. license, um, carry license, CCW, right. like, well, what are, what are all the, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically, uh, a license to carry, you know, uh, I was like, firearm. dang, I shoot guns all the time. I forgot what CPL was. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you asking me or com- you about to com- tell me? Complete blank. Completely, completely no, blank, you, man. You're good. You're good. No, well, I'm hopefully, sorry. hopefully you're good. Somebody, somebody might be listening to be like, uh, everything he said, uh, turning it off. He don't know what he's talking about. He's, he's just on here <laughs> trying to, trying to get my attention. How dare he, you know? I'm sorry. Anyways, yeah. so I dropped the ball. No, you're good. So we we gotta t- we gotta make sure that people like understand what we're talking about. Um, concealed carry license, concealed pistol license, being able to carry a handgun, um, be with permission from the state. Which some some people might say, why do you need permission from the state to do something that's constitutionally recognized as your right to to kind of to do? Um, I don't know. Like you'll have to take that up with your senator, your congressman, uh, your your local state government, because um, that's um, apparently y'all allow them to make laws um, to restrict <laughs> your rights. When I say y'all, whoever, maybe your grandpa or somebody did. Right. Anyways, um, Erica's big day. That to me, when we got a chance to talk about that, I was I was I was really happy, and I was glad to see people that I knew were listening to the podcast went out. And, you know, purchase copies and, you know, got into the workbooks and purchase copies for friends. Um, and obviously it didn't blow it up to, you know, a million copies sold, but it's a very simple book and maybe there needs to be more books and more competition in the space, even like other people writing books that are designed to help kind of educate, um, the young reader about the nature of firearms in a, in a way that just makes sense for children. That's a, that's a hard conversation. I mean, just being really open and kind of vulnerable in a way that maybe I don't want to be, but I will be. Um, I've been handling firearms around my kids for a long time, like since they were pretty much since they were born. I've had guns, um, multiple firearms in the home, secured um, in, in such a way that they are safe. And I was handling my Glock 45 the other day I was getting ready to put it on for work and my daughter was like what's that I was like what you, what you mean what's that like <laughs> what's, what's what and now I'm like and now I'm like I don't I don't, I don't know if, like I know I've always wanted to talk to her about this and kind of like make sure she understands but like she's still her mind is still so immature in some ways that I'm not exactly sure how to approach this the subject and so stuff like erica's big day um like what you just pulled up i mean go ahead and pull that back up for the for the viewing audience and we'll we'll 
read it out loud for the listening audience. It's a, it's a, basically, it looks like almost like a bookmark, extra fat. It says, Erica's Big Day, stop, don't touch, run, tell an adult. Basically, the, the, the four tenets of the Erica's Big Day book. And it's like, it's just super simple, super simple. Like, kids don't need overly complicated information. They don't need to know if this is 9 mil, 45, 40, or, you know, 50 AE. Like, they don't need to know any of that. They just need to know, stop, don't touch, you know, tell an adult. And what, what's, so what happened? happened? Did, you, did you take the opportunity so to educate her? We, this, this literally happened, like, yesterday. Um, <laughs> so I, I was rushing out the door, so I really didn't have time to sit down and talk to her. But now, like, I'm even in, in our conversation right now, I'm like, I need to find time to actually be able to sit down and have not like a super long conversation, but a, a, a more introductory conversation with concepts that make sense for a three-year-old. Yeah. You know? And it's, to me, it's um, kind of weird because she's been seeing it all the time. Like I'm, I dry fire around her. Like it's not a big deal. And but now she's she's understanding terms like kill because there's like flies that come into the house and I'll be killing <laughs> flies and she'd be like, Daddy, kill it, kill it, kill it, kill the fly. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, um, this is a weird concept for a three year old. Murder. Hey, <laughs> yeah. hey, my daughter be like, Dad, you better go pew pew. I'm like, yeah, babe, you better go. You better go with your friends. I'm like, yeah, babe, okay. You know, she mm -hmm. she 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 kind of understand it. But back to something you said, um, like the we have the book. But then also, Ron, it's now on a Kindle. So you can download it from the website on the, at a cheaper rate on your Kindle. So you can always have it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's Kindle, really wow. available. Mm -hmm. You can download it. Yeah, it's on the Kindle. So it's kind of like the idea, like back in the day, you had the McGruff story and all that. So we like, you know, why not? Why recreate the wheel? Just just get our curriculum. Just, just use our tools that we created to help you know, educate and inform kids at all ages and wherever they're at. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess when you mentioned, you know, other people write books, I think it, uh, it's, it has been other people that wrote books about kid safety and, and gun, you know, firearms, but you gotta understand, um, like those are good books just like ours, but you know, we got curriculum, we got the book and then we have a, we also, I don't know if you, you probably seen it. We all also had animations. We got like two animations that's, that's created right. with Eric's big day. So it kind of gets you like you can get read the book or you can watch the animation and the animation is more of a visual because some kids may learn more visual than they do reading. That's so right. we kind of like created the whole kit and caboodle for you to have or to use. So why not just get it from us? Wow. And that's kind of how are we doing it. That, that's, that just makes sense. So my question for you, and this is, this is maybe um, like, almost like almost an offline question slash conversation. And this is for those who have, who have lasted this long in the podcast. Like, how do you plan on really making sure that this information is distributed? Cause I know that, you know, Instagram has done a great job of shadow banning, um, shadow banning, uh, uh, Erica's big day. Like if the name is even used in a hashtag, like that post is not going anywhere. Um, and making sure that, um, how do, you, how do you guys plan on getting the information out? Like, because this is, is life saving information. And real quick, welcome to those who are tapping in for the live stream. I see you, Burnt Nugget. Thank you for tuning in. Um, that was that's the whole like people like you, <laughs> putting you on, putting you on the spot, Johnny on the spot. So yeah. you know, people that friends that have podcasts, right? Um, mm -hmm. also my podcast and. Like just sharing the 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 IG page, sharing the curriculum. It, at any point that you can, like if you if you have a situation with you with a kid and you need to teach him something, always refer to a reference. Hey, why don't you go take a look at Erica's big day? You know what I'm saying? Like just keep yeah. just keep the conversation going. Like just keep it up. Just because you might you might not have seen it in a couple weeks, a couple months, or nothing. You know, what I'm saying, but we are working behind the scenes. But just keep the conversation going because as long as you keep it going, then it'll stay always going to stay live and and um you know st especially with the algorithm, you got to play tricks with hashtags and words and just that mm -hmm. and the third. But um that was the main reason for the podcast, just you know to keep it out there to keep pushing it, and you know other folks that's in the community that love us and like what we're doing, just just push it. Just like hey, any chance I get to talk about Erica's big day, 
I'm gonna either buy a book or I'm gonna download the curriculum and I'm gonna pass it out. But you know, um, it, it's hard in our community to always um, push everybody. You know. Yeah, yeah, it, it it is really hard. I mean, I know for myself when I was first getting started, and you you do have to earn the right to be heard from everybody, not just kids, not just adults, but kids, adults, um, the elders, like every, anybody who. If you want their attention, if you want to share something, you do need to be presenting tremendous value. And I think Erica's Big Day does that. Your show does that. Um, But I also think it's there's I think something weird about how we how we do things where I know there's this one young lady who um, and I've told this story before. She was selling T-shirts, you know, firearms related T-shirts. And she was like, hey, you know, like, guys, I'm doing this, you know, and she was a young black girl. And I was like, man, like these are some these are cool designs, you know. It's it's nothing crazy, but it's it's dope. Like, yeah, let's do this. Um, and I know I repped the brand for a little bit, uh, but she said, kind of when she kind of shifted her mindset away from just like black owned to black people, excuse me, from black owned to black people to just like, hey, I'm making this product, it's great, and everybody should try it. She realized or maybe this happened before then, um, she realized that the majority of the people buying her stuff wasn't necessarily black people. They didn't necessarily hey, care. That That's uh, that's something, like, you if you pigeonhole yourself into that and it don't work out how you think, you know, it should, then you're like, okay. Um, so you, wanna, you want people to blow your stuff and buy it regardless of what color, race, or wherever, right? Yeah. And that's one thing that's... I'm learning or learn about heavy metal lifestyle, right? I don't care who wear it, right? It can you can be black, green, orange, or bad. It don't I don't it don't it don't matter to me. Just if it fits what you do and how you do, then then rock it. But um, yeah, yeah, I I understand that because I was going through that same same thing. And it's gotta hurt. I mean, I know it it kind of hurt for me because I was like, man, a lot of the at least initially. Uh, the first conversations that I had with this podcast, we more or less exclusively. Um, brought on black guests to tell their stories of how they got into the firearm space um, and and otherwise. So that's um, that's one thing that I was like, man, I, I really personally at dealing with that, dealing with those thoughts of like, man, how do I create a product that people people can like regardless of who they are, where they come from, tell stories that resonate with people regardless of where they are, where they're going, where they're coming from. Um, and still be, I guess, relevant, significant, or or honor more, I guess, more specifically, honor the, you know, the experience of like, hey, people who come from where I'm from, who look like me, who come from different places, but look like me, uh, they can, they can be proud of what we're doing, like, regardless of I who hope we're talking so. to. <laughs> I, that, I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I guess, I guess, and I talked to you about it too. Like, I honestly, honestly, I like this sitting there in front of the. Well, I, it could be a camera, not be a camera, but I like sitting into that that world of studio and just kicking it with people. Like mm-hmm. my wife said, you always, my son, like I hate going to places with that because he always want to talk to somebody. He always want to right. do this, he want to do that. But a lot of people know me, so they will stop and talk to me or whatever. Um, be outside of the, to, you know, the firearms thing. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, just from being in the neighborhood or you know playing sports or whatever. Right. So I like Especially honestly sports. sitting there. I I honestly like sitting there talking to people and just hearing their stories and then you know add my two cents or let people hear it. So I I kind of it's kind of another just a uh, um, therapy session. You know, kicking it, yeah. telling a story, getting getting some off your chest, as yeah. well as you know it's going important. going to the range. Yeah, it's, it's important. important. So uh, last thing I want to talk about because I I do want to let you get back to your life outside of you know talking to me. I know. Once Man, we talk, the kids, we talk for. kids is my life. I'm do gotta go do something. My daughter probably calling me, looking for me now. Probably kids. That's my life. But, so we'll we'll get to a, we'll wrap up in maybe five, five or five or so minutes for those who are listening. Sorry that we're taking so long to get to the get to the good stuff, but here it is. Um, where do you think? I guess the differences are with the like the pop culture two two three, um, kind of like the the more urbanite detroit scene where where are the differences between um 
that and what you've kind of been seeing in the in the Second Amendment space, or I'll phrase it this way. Have you seen what what are some of the problems that you, you see with kind of integrating well not necessarily integrating, but um, connecting the the just regular street scene, for lack of better terms, and just Second Amendment advocacy, Second Amendment education, uh, going to the range, learning, taking classes, um, protecting your rights. Like, do you, do you see any discrepancies with that, or or do you feel like it's going well? Like, what 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 are you seeing? Um. So. Uh, like, okay. So I'll speak from my city. I think the more okay so every, every two or three every saturday and sunday is a cpl class right so what are them people doing after leaving cpl class are is there any further learning outside of that cpl class that you can offer then if you offer some outside of that cpl class what is the quality of training that you're giving them like out of that class now you can pay a hundred some fifty dollars for an eight hour training class that could be firearms fundamentals but are you really like giving them like good information education? Because I think it's a, a it's a bridge between like uh, the two A world and the neighborhood. Like it's it's a different it's a it's a gap in between there. So you know I try to expose as many as many people as I can to like the competition world, the shooting. Because when you get out there and you get into that world and that community, it's not. It's not just about firearms. It's about camaraderie. It's, talk, it's talking about you know you 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 might find a friend in somebody that you you may find a friend in somebody and learn something about somebody that you would never see or never know, and they would never see or never know you. But when you come to competitions, you learn, you talk to people, you educate yourself, and then you become a vessel to go back to your house and your community and your circle, your environment, and bring more people to that. Right. So I think the more that we can like okay so in in the neighborhood it's okay to go out and shoot guns and compete that so people may look at me and be like hey man you weird because i don't, i ain't know we can do that i like you know i show people about the competition world and they didn't know that stuff existed they didn't know like you could do the stuff that i was doing or you know do that because like around here it's, you can't really get outside and get openly get loose or run around and run a gun you got to go like hours out and in the neighborhood can't you know some people can't just get out and drive an hour away to go shoot or whatever i don't have the ability that, or didn't even know it existed so i think it's a gap in to me for me i think it's a gap in in between the 2a community and the neighborhood so the more that we can get the message out and let people know that look you can come out and and learn and educate and it may not be about firearms right um i don't know if you've seen will um gladiator six uh story that he had two people that went and helped uh, uh, somebody got in a car accident. Yeah, with the car accident, and, uh, I saw that, yeah. Right, so they had two people that was at his training event that he was training that had, uh, that had uh, that knew how to do first aid medical stuff and rushed to the scene to go help. That didn't have nothing to do with a firearm, right? So they wouldn't help that person, you know, whatever they had the situation, they wouldn't help, but they learned something from his training that would help them in the real world. And then they had to do, do with a firearm. It was just first day, first day stuff. So I think that it don't always have to be about the firearm. It could be about first day. It could be about awareness. It could be about gun laws, gun, whatever. Just education is the key, especially for the Second Amendment, especially for keeping this thing going. Because, you know, it's bad to say like they, they almost, they after us. It's almost like a wish hunt. They, <laughs> they trying to find any and every reason to take to strip our rights so i just think i think it's a gap in there and we just got to educate the neighborhood more much as possible yeah and no, i try I, to do my I, part of exposing people to that yeah i mean exposure is 100 percent key like you've got to expose people to it you've got to put out good content i i kind of I shouldn't because, you know, people know that I make like gun related content. It's not always just purely educational. Sometimes I'm doing product stuff. And in fact, most of the time it's not educational at all. I'm just telling you about a cool product that I found or that I'm trying out. And, I'm, you know, maybe you like it, too. Maybe it but, makes your lifestyle a little bit easier. Um, but that but that's an education because you you bring in a, you bring in something from 
the the metaverse that they don't know about never mm -hmm. heard of and you bringing it to your people and then you also bring the people that didn't never know about it so you educate it like oh i can get this that make this better then next you know hopefully they'll tell two people about it so now right. you you know you you keep educating educating and i think that's where the gap is because you know i got stuff or do stuff and i'm like man why'd you buy this why'd you get that oh i ain't know i'll just this that and the third and i'm just like no you should have like i'll be at the gun store like look come ask me you know because my gun store i like you know uncoil um they they good people up there and they kind of mm -hmm. educated and i go up there they're like hey man ask him because he run he run it you know he 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 run he run the rifle he'll shoot this he'll shoot that didn't so y'all give away a staccato the other day not yet we at the end of the month we we are giving away a staccato is, is <laughs> it is it no, it's that, that one? one. It's an X. Right, it's an XL. It's it's at the end of the month. Um, we're doing it. Um, but like I said, when they come up there, I just try to educate as many people as I can, or our brothers and sisters, because they come in there and they ask questions, and I, you know, for I try to educate as much as possible. Excellent. So, um, kind of like last little point, and then we'll we'll start wrapping up, and we'll let people know how they can find you. Um, you're absolutely right with the education. I, I'm blown away because you put out a little video talking about like gun belts and there's a lot of people who have no idea like what a decent gun belt looks like, especially with the new tech that we have where it's like it needs to be rigid, but it doesn't need to be this. It needs to be easily adjustable. So maybe the old school leather gun belt isn't necessarily ideal that you can still run it if it works for you that's cool but like if you want something a little bit more convenient some of the ratcheting stuff works some of the velcro belts work pretty good like you don't have to be stuck buying a 60 dollars belt that's like not feature rich per se but um, but you know what too the industry has came around to for the more of the concealed carry world then yeah. back in the day it was everything was outside military at least style you didn't really have belts that were concealable that was solid, um, but now you can see the you know the, the 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 community, the people that's creating stuff are creating stuff for more concealed carry. Man, mm -hmm. you don't know how many times I didn't walk up to homeboys that come in the like, man, why you got that? You sagging your pants, but you got this belt on with this gun. What are you doing? Like, what are you try, trying to be concealed, or are you trying to show people you got a firearm? What's up? Oh man, I didn't know. You know, I'm trying to find a good belt. I just had this. I'm like, well, let me walk you over here. And check out these next Nexus belts or these core right. essential belts or what you know whatever. Um, so definitely, definitely, and I'm 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 in my heart. <laughs> as people who should know the most really piss me off. Is the people who don't know. I I understand. Um, I actually had a guy who I saw him at the range. He had an outside the waistband kind of like open carry um, holster, where his trigger, the point where his trigger was, was covered up by the holster. But there was a section right behind the trigger that was open. Like you could you could go in there with your finger and start moving it around Pop it if out. you wanted to. Really yeah, you could do you could do in fact if you really wanted to, you could kind of actually pull the trigger if you fished it just right. And I'm like, bro, like you should know better, first of all. And he's like, Yeah, I'm about to change my you know, I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't want to see that again, first of all. And <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare come back in here like that. <laughs> right. Never work in this town again. But the um on the other side there's a lot of people who have no idea like they really think it's fine to just throw and nina de la flores destiny she's the homie i really need to bring her back um like soon um but the one thing that i, I noticed is with people who follow her and she'll say like hey listen like guys like let's let's not <laughs> Like, let's not uh, freaking do this. Let's not throw a, a gun into your purse and just let it dangle, or, you know, get jumbled up with the keys, right? Like, that's not that's not the move. Mm -hmm. There's a hundred things we could do. Like, hey, don't don't just have your finger on the trigger pointing at your kneecap. Like, that's not the move. You know, like, don't point the trigger. Don't point your gun at a dog. Like, that's not the move. <laughs> like, and they'd be like, oh, it's not that serious. Calm down. It's not that serious. It's like, no, 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 no. It, it, it is that serious, first of all. Like, you need to chill. Like, it, and that's you. You see that like you see it all the time, and people don't understand. It's not like a muscle. I ain't gonna, like okay. Gonna take the muscle memory. It's not muscle memory, but it's just you know how to understand that 
you moving a gun in an unsafe way and you're not knowing you're doing it because you're self-consciously doing it but mm -hmm. that's there and again like people can't be upset if you re come up to them like you you don't know who to approach and who not to approach because you got to kind of like test it, yeah. their uh test their like what temperature they on to see if you can talk to them where they're not feeling offended and they come in with a group of people or they with a group of people and they may be thinking they're the big shot but they doing right. stuff and that's they get unsafe they, or you know? <laughs> right and then they like oh now they on the offensive so you know like the gun thing is 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 ego man it's it's mm -hmm. it's like you know like this sometimes just listen this you know we trying to help we ain't trying to hurt right and it's it's a hundred percent that and i think we, we got to find a way to really kind of break through some of that barriers maybe it's like hey listen like i let me give you my card. I, we're not even going to have a conversation because you're not going to hear it, but I'm going to give you my card and let's, let's talk offline or let's, I got a video that talks specifically about like some of the basics of gun safety and why you got to do it. Like how do how do we have these conversations and like pierce the ego? I don't know if that's something we can deal with right now. Cause we are wrapping up, but like, like, like you said, you can, you kind of have to like test the temperature, kind of see what time people are on. Cause like, bro, like I cannot have you popping off on me in this store and really, we're just trying to do good work. I think the more you do with your podcast and my podcast and just do like little, you know, content pieces that that's directed towards that or, you know, situation mm -hmm. or tell a story like, hey, I was at the gun store the other day and this is what happened. Right. Everybody, don't be alarmed if you have a person that comes up to you and asks you, you know, questions or kind of talk to you because they got they got your. They got your best intentions at heart. I'm here to help. I'm not here to hurt you or try to demean you by any way. That's right. You know and what I'm saying? I think building good culture where people can be gently uh, corrected or adjusted or redirected, I think that that is 100% it. So I'm going to keep doing that. I need you to keep doing that. I think we ought to uh, – somebody said this to you the other day, like, when you argue with people online, when I say argue, like reply to people who seem like they're just being ignorant for no reason, it's not always for that person. It's for the people who come afterwards and see the exchange. You're not, you're not educating that person anymore. You're educating the people who come and read it afterwards. So maybe part of that is there, but um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that we got to work on. Heavy, my guy, how can people find you? Um, I ain't hard to find. I'm uh Heavy Metal Lifestyle two two three. That's the first IG page, and then Pop Culture two two three is the podcast. Um, please follow, share, get the message out. Um, we need followers. We need people to like what we're doing, so we can keep doing it. Um, uh, make us feel good. <laughs> and sharing and liking don't cost you nothing. It's free. It just costs you a little on your finger, right? So that's it. That's right. So, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. What Heavy said is absolutely correct. You have to really do a great job of sharing. And not just sharing, but like feeling like, hey, listen, this is a part of the podcast that I just listened to. This clip makes sense to me. This, like, if you go on, if you actually go on like the desktop version of YouTube, when you hit share, it actually gives you like a time code where it says, like, you know, 20 minutes, 53 seconds go grab a time code and be like, listen, like this part of the podcast, it just made sense. They're talking about X, Y, Z, share those out, share that on your Facebook. If you're old, like me, um, take a screenshot, share it on the gram, let people know what you're doing. Cause the, the, the shadow ban is re for real. Like if you looked me up on uh, Instagram, if you type in armed underscore Atlas until you type that full thing out, you're not finding me like this shadow ban. Like, <laughs> so clearly, your 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 big tech overlords don't want you to get this information so clearly it's important clearly you need to know um be sure to share it out hop on heavy's podcast pop culture 223 he's telling really great stories i am excited for where he's going from here he can only go up from here and somebody said this about ai and i think it's true about heavy right now is the worst that his podcast is ever going to be it's only going to get doper from here right and it's not bad. It's a, it's a great podcast, and I'm I'm excited that we got a chance to talk about it, um, guys. Please go ahead and uh, shoot me, um, <laughs> sorry, tweet at me on Twitter at Armed Atlas. Shoot me a DM if you found this episode informative at under, Armed underscore Atlas on Instagram. 
I'm getting a little bit tongue tied. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much for watching or listening wherever you are. And remember, keep it costly.